Hey everyone, in this video we're going to do an example of finding the derivative of our function using that uh, new limit definition that we talked about in our previous video. Um, so here's our example. If our function is given by y equals x squared plus 3x, we want to find y prime of 1. That is what we want to find the, uh, the derivative of this function at x equals 1. So in our limit definition of the derivative, our function was named f and we wrote it as like f of x. Here our function is named or called y instead. So instead of looking at f prime, we're gonna be looking at y prime. So instead of calling our derivative df dx, we can think of y as f of x. So we can call this dy dx instead. So if we have y equals f of x, then df dx, the derivative of our function with respect to x is the same as the derivative of y with respect to x. And then we're gonna evaluate that at the x value of one. So if we want to find the derivative of our function at x equals 1, we're going to have to use that limit definition. So let's go ahead and write that up, get it ready. So if we want to find the derivative of y or f at 1, then we have to take the limit as x approaches 1 of that difference quotient f of x minus f of 1, the change in y, divided by x minus 1, uh, the change in x. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So to find f prime of 1, we have to take the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x minus f of 1. That's what's going to go in our numerator. So what is f of x? Well, that's just our function y, x squared plus 3x. And then we're going to have to subtract away from that f of 1, and that's just the value of our function when the input is 1. So what is y equal to when we plug x equals 1 in here? Looks like we're going to get 4 as our output. And then we're going to have to divide that by the change in those x values, x minus 1. So sometimes when our functions are more complicated and we're using the limit definition of the derivative to find the derivative, I think it's a good idea to put uh, the quantity f of x and the quantity f of 1 or f of a in general inside of its own little set of brackets. So if we applied that here, just be aware of which piece of that numerator is coming from f of x and which is coming from f of 1 or f of a, because when we have more terms in that uh, second piece, the f of 1 or f of a, we have to make sure to distribute that negative sign to each term. Let's see, if we tried to plug in x equals 1, it looks like we get one of those indeterminate forms of 0 over 0, and we've seen how to resolve those limits uh, in some of our earlier videos. We have to use that equivalent functions theorem, do some factoring, and cancel a common factor. Um, and we kind of have a hint of what that common factor we're going to cancel is. It should be an x minus 1 that we are trying to cancel out. So let's see, our numerator, if we write it all as 1, is x squared plus 3x minus 4, and our denominator is x minus 1. So we're trying to factor an x minus 1 out of our numerator. So let's see, how do we factor x squared plus 3x minus 4? We have a hint, we know there should be an x minus 1 factor in there then we'd have to have an x plus 4 as our second factor. If we expand those out, we should get back to what we started with, x squared plus 3x minus 4. Our denominator has already been x minus 1, and now we can see that factor in the denominator will be canceled out by the x minus 1 factor in the numerator. This will give us an equivalent limit, the limit as x approaches 1, now of just the quantity, x plus 4. And now this is a, a limit of just a simple polynomial. We can evaluate it using direct substitution. We plug in x equals 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. So that is the value of our derivative here. y prime of 1 or f prime of 1, not too picky on our notation in this example, is 5. So that is the slope of the tangent line to this function at the point when x is equal to 1. It's describing the instantaneous rate of change of our function at that point. We're going to do another example of finding the derivative of our function using our limit definition, and we're going to use the limit as x approaches a definition. So here our function is the square root of x, and we just want to find kind of the, the general derivative at any point. Uh, eventually we're going to talk about the derivative as its own function, and thinking about the, gen uh, the derivative at a general point is helpful for that, because um, now we can let uh, our x value basically be anything. We can let it vary. So it'll be very nice if you want to find the derivative at a bunch of different locations. Don't have to go through the limit process every single time. If we want to find f prime of a, 
we have to compute the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. All right, so to find our derivative using our limit definition, we have to first evaluate these pieces in that uh, general formula. What is f of x and what is f of a? Well, f of x is just our function, the square root of x, and f of a is just the square root of a, our function evaluated at x equals a. So if we plug that in, our limit now looks like the limit as x approaches a of the square root of x minus the square root of a all over x minus a. And so we cannot uh, evaluate our limit at the moment using direct substitution. If we try to just plug in x equals a, everything would kind of cancel out and we get 0 over 0, that thing we call an indeterminate form. In our previous examples where we try to find or evaluate limits like this, it all came down to like canceling a factor like of x minus a. And we can do that here. Uh, one way to factor or cancel out the factor of x minus a is multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the quantity called the conjugate. You probably learned about that when you were uh, rationalizing uh, roots in previous math classes. So we could do that here. If instead of multiplying by the conjugate is uh, by factoring uh, the denominator. It's actually a bit tricky, but technically the denominator is a one of those difference of squares patterns. It's just not one that we have really seen too often. So we can think of x itself as the square root of x squared. Technically, the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x, but we're going to kind of ignore that here. It all works out anyways. And similarly, we can think of a as just the square root of a squared. Now, that might make it a little bit easier to see that that is the difference of squares. And we can always factor the difference of squares as um, that first thing minus the second thing after we've taken the square root, multiply by that first thing plus that second thing after we've taken the square root. So this is the same thing as the limit as x approaches a of the numerator stays the same. It's the square root of x minus the square root of a. But now our denominator can be broken up as the square root of x minus the square root of a multiplied by the square root of x plus the square root of a. And if you're having a hard time following that we could factor the denominator like that, you can always go back and multiply by the conjugate or just uh, distribute that denominator, multiply it out, and make sure we get back to x minus a. All right, so at our current spot, we can see that there is a common factor that we can cancel out in the numerator and the denominator. It's the factor that causes the issue of zero showing up in both that numerator and our denominator. So what would be left over after we cancel that common factor? Well, we still have our limit we haven't taken. Everything got canceled out of the numerator through division. So we have a factor of one left over. In our denominator, we have that quantity, the square root of x plus the square root of a left over. And so now we can try to use our direct substitution property. Just plug in x equals a, and what do we get? Well, we get two square roots of a in our denominator. So that's 1 over the square root of a plus the square root of a. Well, those are like terms. So we could write that as 1 over 2 times the square root of a. That is kind of the general derivative of our square root function at uh, any point. So now we could quickly find the derivative at 1, 2, 3, any spot where our derivative is defined. We can find it using this kind of shortcut formula we've created.